Hello, my name is David Jose, and I'm here to present to you a documentary to help the people of Arizona and the precinct committeemen who are watching what is going on with all the corruption, alleged corruption, government officials ignoring their responsibilities in Arizona. This documentary is called Precinct Committeemen and the People Activated. Precinct Committeemen and the People Activated. I'm someone who helped get the 2020 audit in Arizona. I actually uh, created the system of affidavits, worked with Kelly Ward, uh, Karen Fan, and, and, and a few others as I was invited to a meeting. I created the affidavits that were used from the people to order the legislature to come back to work to order the uh, legislature to actually do the audit. And I actually got to work behind the scenes and uh, do Zooms to help Karen Fan learn how to stop the DOJ from interfering, stop the courts from interfering, and to be able to defeat the attack of the Board of Supervisors. Um, what we're seeing today is a battle that is happening over the state of Arizona. And what we're finding is, is that the people and the precinct committeemen are realizing that it just seems that something is off and that the politicians who are in office, even on the conservative side, are not following through and doing what they're supposed to do. They're allowing the corrupt, they're allowing Katie Hobbs and others who are trying to stop good bills from passing in Arizona that would protect Arizona's Arizonans from passing. They are trying to stop us from having clean and clear elections, fair elections. They are trying to stop us from investigating bad things that are happening. They are trying to stop us from seeing our own ballots. And now we're starting to hear that there might be potential corruption and bribery that is causing for the conservatives in the legislature to ignore their duties as well as some of the executive branch officers of the state and the judiciary. Now, could it be happening? Yes. But what we find is that many attorneys and government officials try to make you, the precinct committeeman, and the people feel stupid as if you don't have any knowledge of the law, what's right, and that they're really trying to work to get things done even though no bills are being passed, nobody's being impeached for blocking bills from being passed, and there's just a vicious cycle of, hey, it's the Republicans that won't let us do it. It's the Democrats. Oh, no, 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 no. It's Katie Hobbs. No, no, no. It's Adrian Fontes. Everybody wants to blame each other, but they're not trying to remove each other. Now, it's extremely strange that during this time of corruption, Liz Harris allowed someone to exercise their right to speak up. And we actually got to see something that was amazing. I think for the first time in Arizona, the people got a chance to see uh, how things really work in Arizona with their administrative hearings. Um, we see that uh, the gentleman Joseph Chaplick responded uh, in a statement and said that he gave Liz Harris due process. And then he explained that due process is simply... Uh, allowing someone to be heard. Guys, that's not what due process is. In the Constitution of Arizona, it tells what fairness is in the eyes of the people and the declarations of rights. And it's much more than just being heard. When they say that it's just being heard, this is how attorneys and government officials have tricked us out of our rights in order to make money off of federal programs or to expand their interests. We're going to talk about that later. But I want you to see, guys, that you are looked at many times as funny or wrong or uneducated. If you believe that something happened wrong with the 2020 or 2022 election, if you speak up about conservative issues, you are now being attacked. We have newspapers in Arizona and, and magazines that are writing articles about the people and calling people who are Caucasian people, uh, Christian radicals and uh, all these weird names and election deniers and, and racists and all this stuff, right? There is an attack on conservative people 
in America, but in Arizona, things are full speed ahead and the attempt is to keep you from having your voice heard. At the precinct committeeman level, you will see that the chairs of the precinct committees have often tried to block you from censuring uh, government officials who have not followed the law or who have not used their power correctly in order to deal with issues that put the state in danger. Well, we're going to clear that up today. I first want to give praise, though, to gentlemen like Daniel Wood or uh, Christian Lamar. Christian Lamar is the person who I heard come up with this precinct committee men strategy. I always believe in giving the power to the people. Uh, the precinct committee men position uh, deals with actual political uh, items. They are able to censure people. They are able to uh, write resolutions to let it be known what it is that they want to happen in the state. And because they're at the lower level, they are likely not bribed or paid in order to stop them uh, from speaking up or to shield the people from having success when they're trying to punish the government officials for doing wrong. This is why I believe that we just saw Christian Lamar make a post of how uh, there was an extremely, uh, extremely powerful vote to censure two rep uh, representatives that are Republican over the Liz Harris situation for voting to have her expelled. Uh, Mr. Livingston, I can't remember the other, but we find that it, the, the vote was like 70 to 20, excuse me, 70 to 20. So the people in that uh, LD have not been paid off where they can't tell the truth about what they believe. And there's no person at the top who can stop them effectively from voicing their opinions when the people have the knowledge and understanding. And so are you wrong for thinking that it's possible that the government is doing wrong or that they're bribes or that we should look into it? Does Arizona have a history of bribes or where uh, a situation where the legislature would block legislation from one set of people or the people in order to protect a class of people who have given them some type of bribe or some wealth? Well, what I want to do is deal with your issues that you have psychologically when when government officials and attorneys tell you that you're crazy for caring about investigating bribery, election issues, or things that might be done wrong, collusion between judges, attorneys, and, and, and the executive branch, is there a possibility that things are wrong? Is there a history of things going wrong? Are you crazy? Or are you in a position where you can handle business for the people, bring back the state, and is there actual remedy in law that the America first people who declared that they want to protect you, but they are not, and you see it now, is there remedy in law that they won't tell you? I can tell you personally that I've presented information to people who say that they're America first that would give you all the knowledge you need and the power to fix all of this, but they try to hide it. I will say that Christian Lamar is one that is standing for the truth. Liz Harris is one that's standing for the truth. There's some others around the country, but I will tell you that it is your time now to fix all this. I want to get rid of the shame. I want to get rid of the doubt, and I want to show you clearly the history of Arizona, not from my own words, but someone who's been a politician. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this book, Understanding the Arizona Constitution by Tony McClory. We're going to find that Tony McClory is a... Um, leading lawyer and college educator who was an assistant attorney general through six governors. Tony McClory has written a definitive guide to Arizona government that is comprehensive and e as it is, as comprehensive as it is easy to understand. It provides a thorough explanation of the state's constitution and shows the impact of the unique features uh, that the unique features have on the everyday operation of the state's political system. Now, what I will tell you is is that it has been hidden for most people what goes on in their state constitutions. Another thing that's important is, is that it has been hidden the history of how the state constitutions have been 
hidden from the people so that they don't understand how the state runs or the political operations and how to hold government accountable. The state constitution actually is the trust indenture or document that outlines the duty of the state government and the local municipal municipal governments. Now, the government officials and attorneys will always talk about the United States Constitution because they know that's not specific always to the actions of the people locally. So what I'm going to do is get rid of your doubt. I understand that precinct committeemen right now are trying to make sure their kids are free. They're trying to make sure they can have fair elections. They're trying to make sure that Arizona can have water. They're trying to fix the border, stop the fentanyl issue. But we can clearly see government actors as trustees blocking everything. And nobody's trying to hold anybody accountable in the circle. They can talk about Katie Hobbs and say that she's no good or she's a bad actor or she's a criminal. She stole an election. But they're not trying to impeach her. That should tell you something. We also are going to see where government officials are working together in federal programs to make money off of your pain, and they will actually take part in things that are criminal in order to present information in a way that would make people believe that someone is wrong so that they can make money. I'm not going to just say this. I'm going to prove it to you. So we're going to go into this book by... Tony McClory, I'm going to read to you. I'm going to put it up on the screen. <laughs> Excuse me. And we're going to look and see if we have a reason for concern, if there's a history of a problem. Okay, guys. So in order to be able to help you understand how serious this is, I want to read to you from this book uh, from Tony McClory so we can get an understanding of what's going on. And after we read, I believe that you will feel better about standing up and dealing with corruption because we're going to go back to the beginning of Arizona and we're reading this book for scholarly purposes to understand what has happened in history. Um, but we're going to start off on page 18 in the paragraph here. And here's what it says. Secondly, the territorial government was weak and at times corrupt. So in Arizona's territorial history, before becoming a state, it was weak and corrupt. Many of the appointed governors were carpetbaggers, opportunists from other states who had no real interest in the territory. They typically got their, typically got their position as a political favor and it and did not last long in their job. Given the primitive conditions in the territory, the governor's mansions was a simple log cabin. It is not surprising that many of the Eastern appointees sought a quick exit. For example, Arizona first governor was appointed by President Lincoln after losing his house seat from Maine. Within two years, Goodwin left Arizona never to return. His successor followed a similar course. Some territorial governments, such as John C. Fremont, devoted more attention to private investments, pay close attention, guys, than to the job of governing. Now, there's a private investment or private business, private uh, enterprise issue going on in Arizona with multiple type of private programs uh, that are federal partnerships where government officials are making money and people are connected in this. And there's billions of dollars being made. I'm going to prove it to you. So it says, um, Fremont, who took the position in 1878 because of financial difficulties, spent most of his brief tenure outside of Arizona pursuing his own business affairs. Fremont's case was certainly extreme. However, the territory's governors have uh, often had financial stakes in the mining, railroad and other commercial ventures that they actively promoted. Now we are having some issues with private enterprise right now. And this is one of the issues that a lot of people don't see that's causing problems in Arizona that nobody wants to talk about. But I believe that you will as the people and precinct committeemen. Watch this. This led to conflict of interest and allegations of more serious corruption. See, we're right back in full circle 
where Arizona is dealing with allegations of corruption. The House is worried about people coming and bringing allegations and they wanted to lock it down and keep people from talking about things that might be wrong with people inside of the legislature like that can't happen. Let's keep reading. Some territorial governors behaved in unorthodox ways, reflecting the primitive conditions of the frontier. For example, when Arizona third governor Anson Safford became enmeshed in an ugly marital scandal, he simply ordered the territorial legislature to enact a law that dissolved his marriage. Safford then promptly signed the bill in his official capacity as governor. The territory's seventh governor, Conrad Zulik, had to be rescued from house arrest in Mexico before he could be sworn in. He apparently first learned of his gu gubernatorial appointment during his late night rescue. Watch this. Now, this is where it's going to get heavy. The other two branches of government were not more illustrious. Throughout the territorial period, legislators were accused of embezzlement, expense account padding, misappropriation of funds, and other financial irregularities. Guys, this whole Thaler situation deals with financial and real estate irregularities with government officials, and there's been a history of this in Arizona, but the legislature, which serves us, our servants, right? They're the employee. We run the show. We have all political power, as the Constitution says. They don't want us to look at it. So let's go deeper. The 13th, 13th legislature became known as the thieving 13th when a grand jury... Now, notice the government officials in Arizona and other states and the Bar Association blocked the people from having access to the grand juries. So when we want to tell what's wrong, there's no grand jury to go to. The courts block things. There's no court to go to. Sonny Borelli himself said that the courts are hiding information dealing with the elections or suppressing it on a call with Pete Santilli, allegedly. So we're realizing that there's very few places to go because the government officials have really good uh, potential to use the courts when they, like Wendy Rogers, want to stop a uh, reporter from coming to their house. They can uh, do what I think it was Ujinta Reed, I believe it was, did and get somebody arrested who's, who's coming up to her, talking to her as a reporter uh, at an event, I think, a, a year or two ago. But when it comes to going after the Board of Supervisors for not turning over ballots, they can't get the court to work. The Bar Association will not help them uh, when it comes to prosecuting actors in government who won't follow the law when it comes to the elections. So in other words, things seem to allegedly be out of control. Is this familiar to Arizona? Has this happened before? Watch. A grand jury concluded that it had exceeded its $4,000 operational expense limit by over $46,000. A grand jury said they broke the law. But the problem is, is we the people don't have access to the grand juries because the Bar Association has uh, taken over all of the court process. The Bar Association went after all or many of the attorneys who tried to help with getting audits across the country, they wanted to go after their licenses. We saw it play out in Michigan. So the Bar Association is doing its own thing. In the situation with Liz Harris, guys, let's pay attention. Joseph Chaplet came out with a statement saying that he was anonymously given information, which were text messages from Thaler and Liz Harris, anonymously. How could it be fairness when you do a trial by ambush or surprise and you don't give Liz Harris these messages, you so-called have evidence that you're presenting into a hearing or a case without telling the other side so she's hit off guard when you show it to her, how is that 
due process. The gentleman Joseph Chaplick said in his statement, in so many words, that he gave Liz Harris due process and he explained that due process is simply the right to uh, the ability to be heard. That's not due process. See, attorneys have been tricking us and limiting what is rightfully ours as the people by telling us definitions that don't really deal with what the Constitution says is fairness and our forefathers. Our forefathers said all cases have to be open. And without unnecessary delay, the people get the right to be able to uh, challenge the testimony of witnesses and evidence and have access to it and to be able to subpoena people and bring people and to have a chance to be heard. But they can't limit your ability to bring forth evidence to deal with the situation or to have access to it. We see where a legislative council member took part in taking some evidence from somebody that they said was anonymous and presenting it into a case. The Bar Association is actually allowing evidence to be put into a case or a hearing without the other side having a chance to hear and nobody vouching for it and saying that it's legitimate. That's not due process. That's not fairness. Let's go deeper. It says, more seriously, territorial legislators were notorious for taking bribes from mining and railroad interests, seeking to evade taxes and government regulation. Sometimes governors served as the middleman. We're going to talk about this. For example, go example Governor Safford once returned $20,000 of a $25,000 payoff to the Southern Pacific Company with a candid note that the legislature was not ex as expensive to fix as the railroad president had anticipated. So in other words, the governor acted as a middleman. The legislature got $25,000 bribe to make legislation to favor one company. And then they blocked access to everybody else. Guys, when we try to go ourselves as the people and get legislation passed to stop kids from getting trafficked through CPS, there's a hard time getting it through ledge council who's actually writing legislation for the legislature when they're not supposed to. We didn't hire the ledge council to write legislation. We only authorize in the Constitution the legislature to do it. But what I want you to understand is, is that ledge council blocks legislation often. They edit it, take stuff out of it, block things that wouldn't be beneficial to the Bar Association of Arizona, in my opinion, from what I've seen working with David Farnsworth and others. So the Bar Association actually helps to limit the amount of legislation that could go through, but the legislation that goes through with these private programs benefit the Bar Association. I'll give you an example, and we can look at it from ARS 26-312. 26-312 actually lets you know in the old, old statute that the government of Arizona allowed for the political subdivisions and the governor to accept money from any person based on their terms if there's an emergency. So we saw Arizona get locked down, which you cannot lock down the people, and I'll prove it. They got locked down. And at the same time, the governor and the political subdivisions were making tons of money through federal programs behind the scenes. And Kelly Townsend even came out and said, if Biden will get, we were talking to the governor in a meeting. And we discussed these things. And if Biden would give us our 450 something million, we'll go ahead and take down the emergency and let the people be free. Well, the state constitution already says that the people have to be free and you can't limit them. You can only lock down government personnel. But they didn't tell you that. And then they did cases against you in COVID courts. Shut down your business. COVID courts are administrative hearings. They attacked you with administrative hearing without due process, without judicial courts, and I'm going to prove it. 
And they destroyed your businesses, destroyed your lives, gave you tickets, locked you down in the house, wouldn't let you go to church, interfered with your liberty. And I can show you how it happened. And I'm also the guy who used the law to open up tons of uh, private entities with Josh Barnett in Arizona, including Mount Side Fitness, Josh's Gym, Diesel Muscle, and tons of others. The government couldn't lock us down because they were breaking the law. It took me to show them when the legislature knew that they were not to do this. The legislature wrote the statute that I used to stop the government from attacking them. So I'm letting you guys see that we have a problem where the government is making money off of the people and tricking you into believing that they got the power to lock you down, to shut you up, to, to cause you to not be able to carry out your, your liberty and your livelihood in Arizona. Guys, they did you wrong. Now, guys, I want you to see what Arizona legislature and their bar association uh, ledge council allowed them to do. In 2014, we see here, it says, Arizona Revised Statute, Title 26, Military Affairs and Emergency Management, 26312, Authority of Executive Officers and Governing Bodies to Accept Materials or Funds. Now, watch what these people did, guys. And I'm going to show you in the Constitution where they did not have the power to do this. And I'm going to show you how this whole program of collecting money inside of the state was a dirty situation and how they made money through a private program in order to lock you down when they never had the authority to lock you down and the attorneys didn't come tell the people. ARS 26-312. Let's look and see what it says. The governor on behalf of the state or the governing body of a political subdivision of this state may accept for purposes of emergency services an offer of the federal government or an agency or officer thereof or an offer of any person, any person, firm or corporation of services, equipment, supplies, material, or funds. They can get money. They can be compensated whether by gift, grant, or loan, now watch this, and may designate an officer of the state or subdivision thereof to receive them on behalf of the state or subdivision, now watch this, subject to terms, if any, of the offerer. Guys, they opened the door for them to be able to accept money, which none of us know where any of this money went. Sal DeCicio came out and said that it went to private entities and trust in Phoenix, and it disappeared. They squandered it away in many cases, a lot of it, allegedly. These people wrote in the statute that if there's an emergency, they can all make money and go by the terms of the one giving the money, meaning that someone can tell them to lock down the state. But now I got to ask you a question. Did they have the power to lock down the state? I want to take you to Arizona Constitution. We're going to go to the one that says Ballotpedia. We're going to look at Article 2, which is the Declaration of Rights in Arizona. And we're going to see Section 3. Now, I want you to pay very close attention because the state constitution is mandatory. It is the highest power of the state outside of the United States Constitution. And where it says what the people can do or have the power to do and what the government has the power to do, it is mandatory the government can't infringe upon it. I'm going to show you how much power you have. And then I'm going to show you how they use federal programs to rip you off, destroy your businesses, attack you with administrative hearings, these COVID tribunals shutting down your businesses, giving you tickets for going outside or not having masks, arresting people, making money on the side. Not their normal employment money, but they actually worked in a federal program to make money outside of normal employment. Let's look at what it says. Can the government lock down the people? Is that in the state constitution? Did we grant that power? Can they destroy our liberty? 
Can they do it? Text of Section 3, Supreme Law of the Land. Supreme Law of the Land, authority to exercise sovereign authority against federal action, use of government personnel and financial resources. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land to which all government, state, and federal is subject. So the government is subject to the United States Constitution, not the people. But let's go deeper. Because in Section B, the people saw it fit to put this inside of the state constitution in 2014, November 4th. Let's look and see what our brilliant people who wrote this were doing. Section B, look at the purpose of this section. To protect the people's freedom. To protect the people's freedom. See, the writers of this Provision in the state constitution knew that they had to protect the people's freedom from government overreach. It says to protect the people's freedom and to preserve the checks and balances of the United States Constitution. This state may exercise its sovereign authority to restrict the actions of its personnel. So we granted authority in the state constitution for the government to restrict their own personnel and not the private people. See, the purpose at the beginning is to protect the people's freedom. So look what it says. They can restrict the actions of its personnel and the use of its financial resources to purposes that are consistent with the Constitution by doing any of the following. Passing an initiative or refer, uh, referendum pursuant to Article 4, Part 1, Section 1 of the Arizona Constitution. Passing a bill pursuant to Article 4, Part 2 of... I'm sorry, in Article 5, Section 7, pursuing any other available legal remedy. Now, we have the power or we gave the power to the legislature to handle these types of things and limit the use of the state actors inside of federal, federal actions or programs, which means that those who wrote this realized that the government could get very out of control with these programs against the people. So I'm going to show you your power, PCs and people. If you look at Section C, it's going to show you something that nobody in government is telling us. The attorneys are not telling us. Our legislature is not telling us. But it's right here in the law. See, when government is getting out of control and doing what they want to and siding with federal programs while attacking the people, they are actually breaking the law and their trust indenture. I'm going to prove that next. But right here in section C, it says, if the people or their representatives exercise their authority. See, you have authority as the people, precinct committeemen. That's what you are, the people. And just the regular people who are not precinct committeemen. If the people or their representatives exercise their authority pursuant to this section, this state and all political subdivisions of this state are prohibited from using any personnel or financial resources to enforce, administer, or even cooperate with a designated federal action or program. See, guys, these guys are working in the state making money off of a lot of programs, CPS programs. They're taking kids with outright a thousand kids a month in many months, making a billion dollars a year. And they're getting side money and they're not telling the people. Child support enforcement. When they make a child support order, they're not telling you that they're going into everybody else's um, social security money and doubling what they took already from the person and breaking that up between the judges and attorneys and government officials. They're not telling you. When they do these COVID programs, they're making money on the side to attack you and not telling you. So it becomes a situation where they keep trying to make statutes to go after the people in these administrative hearings because they're getting paid more with that than they are at their regular job. Guys, I want you to hear what's happening. The biggest thing is that we, the people, just like you guys are censoring government officials now and nobody can stop you. They don't have enough paid off people or interested people 
or people working with the corrupt to stop you. You can shut down every single federal partnership that they're making money in in the state. Guys at the border, they won't they won't seal the border. Why? Well, trafficking and drugs do come to the border. But guys, do you know that they can take kids from the border and then get paid Social Security money for taking care of them? And send the parents back or drop the parents off in the town and get paid money for taking care of them, too? They can separate the kids. The kids can get lost into the hands of traffickers at the border. The government actors working in these programs get to make money. The kids get to get lost and raped. And then we can have a situation like the little girl who has the semen or DNA of 60 something men inside of her at eight years old. Precinct committeemen and people, I believe you want to fix this situation and you just need the ability, the understanding, the wisdom and knowledge to do so. Guys, when you are in your private affairs, the government officials don't have the power to interfere with you. That's a lack of due process. Watch this. Number four, no person. This is an Arizona Constitution. They don't teach us this. No person shall be deprived of life. Liberty, being able to go outside, do what you want to do without due process of law. Well, what's due process of law? We got the ability, guys, to speak about what it is that we wish to. We have the ability to come together like the Bert Brager lady did, which they got so upset about with Liz Harris. The right of petition under the peop of the people peaceably to assemble for the common good shall never be a bridge. Guys, we get to go to the government and tell them what's wrong and they can't interfere. Guys, when we want to go to church, when we want to go outside, when we don't want to wear a mask or we do want to wear a mask, guys, that is a private affair. That's not a public affair where the government gets to tell us what to do. Text of Section 8, right to privacy. No person shall be disturbed in his private affairs or his home invaded without authority of law. Guys, private affairs is something totally different than just your home being invaded. Watch this. Justice in all cases shall be administered openly and without unnecessary delay. Guys, you realize when they're doing these, uh, these agency tribunals, CPS court, child support courts, they can seal the court, seal the information, tell you you can't talk about what they did to you. And just run you over? See, guys, I'm going to show you another thing. See, they're making money off of all these legislative tribunals that the, 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 um, the Bar Association members have tricked them to putting into place to make more money by attacking the people. And I'm going to prove to you that the government officials in Arizona as a whole have destroyed all of their power and dissolved government literally by, by the fundamental principles of law because they're attacking the people who they serve. Watch this. Section 23. The right of trial by jury shall remain inviolate. Notice it says a period after that. The government service guys never had a right to take anything from you. Life, liberty, or property without this due process. They're making money off of kids at the border with no jury. They're making money off of kids in Arizona with no jury. They're making money off of these child support enforcement cases with no jury. They're making money off of traffic cases where they use the Highway Safety Act to make money with no jury. They are literally supposed to be serving the people, but they're more concerned about going after the people. All this COVID lockdown, all these COVID citations and tribunals, it's all without a trial by jury in a court of record. Therefore, they are unlawful. They are literally attacking your rights with a jurisdiction that is not lawful. Now, some people will say, well, David, listen, they can make a choice to do these things if they want to. They don't have to follow all that you're reading off in the state constitution. Then I'm going to show you this. Text of Section 32, Constitutional Provisions Mandatory. The provisions of this constitution are mandatory. Unless by express words, they are declared to be otherwise. You know who the express words are written by? It's if the people write for things to be changed. They can do it, but the government cannot. 
Everything in this constitution is mandatory. I'm going to show you one last thing that's so important because we have people like Wendy Rogers and Joseph Chaplick blocking people who are disgusted with, with the dirty things they do. They guarantee that we have a right to come and teach them the fundamental principles of law to call them out for what they do wrong. Here it is right here in section one in the Arizona Constitution. A frequent recurrence to fundamental principles is essential to the security of individual rights and the perpetuity of free government. If you want gov free government to continue, you have to be able to have the 100% guaranteed right to check your representatives with the law and show them fundamental principles. One of those fundamental principles is not attacking the people with statute or attacking their property, their life, or their liberty. In just one instance, I'm going to show you how them writing statute to lock you down, which they never had the authority to do, and then saying that they will hold you down until they got money from the government for a private program was actually an attack on the state constitution, on your rights, and calls for the people to write new constitutions and replace them. This is what you can do as PCs and as the people right now. I know you guys are tired of the foolishness. I know you guys want to make stuff right. Here's how we can do it. You are strong, conservative, mighty people who just didn't get taught the real, the real truth, the real law. So I'm going to show you today how they attacked you unlawfully, how you have the power to fix it, and you can take back all the power from them. Christian Lamar shows something powerful with the censure process. I'm going to show you how you, the political, uh, the precinct committeemen, and the people can take back the schemes from the legislature and the government so that they stop doing these activities against you. You will stand with mighty power and the Republican Arizona will be flipped. I guarantee you by God, it will happen. Let's finish reading though. For example, Governor Sapford, we see where he returned that money back, right? And it said, from the 1880s onward, Arizona's two major railroad and copper companies were able to block nearly all legislation adverse to their interests. See, guys, Katie Hobbs right now is blocking almost all legislation over elections, over the border, anything that helped the people, she's just killing it. Why would she do that? They're working together, guys, and blaming each other. But if the legislature thought that Katie Hobbs was hurting them for real and they wanted to fix it, they would just impeach her. And I can show you constitutional provisions where they can already. They're playing a game. Let's keep reading. The judicial branch was not above scandal either. Competent judges were scarce and some were simply corrupt. One justice of the peace purportedly stocked his ranch with cattle that the defendant donated in lieu of exorbitant cash fines. Judges like the territorial governors often had extensive private investments. See, the judges today are making money as judges, and I'm going to tell you something that they will not tell you. They're also making money in CPS cases, child support enforcement cases, Highway Safety Act cases, COVID cases on the side. The COVID system is a program where they're getting federal funds and, and, and making money off of attacking the people unlawfully. And they already swore in the state constitution that they would never do so. I'm going to give you everything you need to equip yourself and take this to the next level. People and precinct committeemen. Let's finish reading. Many had worked for mining and railroad companies as corporate attorneys before their appointment to the bench. When they enjoined labor strikes, they were perceived as corporate puppets. Above all, the court system was so primitive and understaffed that vigilante justice flourished throughout the territorial period. Guys, we should not have a situation where vigilante justice comes about in America because bad actors are not prosecuting. See, people get upset when the Board of Supervisors gets to not turn over ballots. 
Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to speak bad about anybody, but I got I got to question this. There's a lady named Jen who worked with, uh, as she's an attorney, she worked with Mark Bronovich, who never pursued the election issues the way that he should. And it's strange to me that True the Vote, the people from True the Vote said that they turned in evidence to the investigator, who the main investigator for uh, Branovich, allegedly, which should be this woman, Jen. I'm not 100% sure. And Branovich's office said we didn't get anything. Liz Harris said that she turned in evidence to Branovich's office, to the AG's office, and they said they never got it. Joe Von Hutton Pulitzer said that he turned in evidence to Branovich's office, and they said they never got it. Why is nobody asking this woman, Jen, who, who their office did not go after anything that we saw clearly happen, even in the audit? We saw maladministration. Uh, we, we see the presentation by We the People AZ Alliance showing that their signature verifications weren't signed and all these different things. The, the, AZ, the AZ Attorney General's office did not go after those situations and let it go. And this woman helped, but then now she's right on uh, Brown of, I mean, um, Abe Hamaday's case dealing with election issues. Guys, it seems like some of the big name players are ignoring issues with the laws. They're ignoring, ignoring the Board of Supervisors and Katie Hobbs doing wrong. And then they want to present themselves as fighting and trying to say that they're part of the election integrity movement, but none of them held anybody responsible. So now when Christian Lamar comes and bring this beautiful process dealing with precinct committeemen, a fire is started because people want to take action, do something to fix it, and they're trying to figure out how. And now the higher up people who this Thaler gentleman keeps presenting evidence that the people who are standing up trying to block censure, trying to block people from speaking, keeps having these funny deeds with these funny names on it. It's kind of weird. I ain't saying anybody's doing wrong because I don't know, I'm not in the middle. But it's a pattern that keeps happening. Maybe the people have a lawful right to fix it. And that's what I want to deal with and discuss in the next section. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you proof of how bad the situation is right now and how much the government and attorneys have hurt us with not teaching us the actual law, the way that things really work. We're going to go to chapter 19 of the two treatises of government by John Locke, a man who uh, the fundamental principles of law that America actually used to establish to be to become established he's actually the writer a huge writer a huge contributor and so we're looking at this section on the dissolution of government he's actually showing here that the government can be dissolved for certain reasons so when government actors do so certain things that they actually dissolve the government. I'll give you an example like section 214. First, that when such a single person or prince sets up his own arbitrary will in place of the laws which are the will of the society declared by the legislative, then the legislative is changed. See, when... People were allowed to change election law when people as health administrators were allowed to shut you down, health departments, health boards, or they made rules to say you can't go outside. Guys, they changed the legislative. There's nothing that allows for the legislature in the state constitution to trap the people and block them from experiencing life, liberty, 
and enjoying their property. Let's continue. For that being in effect, the legislative whose rules and laws are put in execution and required to be obeyed, when other laws are set up and other rules pretended and enforced. Guys, they shut you down, pretended like it was law, and forced you to do stuff that they had no constitutional right to do. Watch this. Constituted by the society. That's what we wrote in the constitutions. Have enacted, it is plain that the legislative is changed. Whoever introduces new laws not being there unto authorized by the fundamental appointment of the society, our constitutions, or subverts the old, disowns and overturns the power by which they were made, and so sets up a new legislative. They, without our permission, set up their own way to do things which they had no authority, and it dissolves them by right 100%. Guaranteed. 215. Secondly, when the prince or the executive branch actor, like Katie Hobbs, hinders the legislator from legislator from assembling in his due time or from acting freely pursuant to those ends for which it was constituted. Guys, the, the Arizona Constitution in Article 7, I believe it's section 12, tells us that there shall be law passed. To protect the elective franchise, but Katie Hobbs is actually blocking all the legislation. She's preventing the legislative from acting freely is what the legislature Republicans are saying. So why aren't they impeaching her if she's blocking their ability to do the job we gave them to do? Watch this. Or from acting freely pursuant to those ends for which it was constituted. The legislative is alter if you're blocking the legislature from doing what we told them to do you're altering the legislative as a government actor you are trampling the rights of the people and blocking our will therefore you are going against the trust we reposed in you and you dissolve the government you lose all your power we can start over as the people watch this for it is not a certain number of men no neither their meeting it's not about them coming together and meeting and doing all this stuff unless they have also freedom of debating and leisure of perfecting, perfecting the laws that, I'm sorry, perfecting what is good for the good of the society, wherein the legislative consists. When these are taken away or altered so as to deprive the society of the due exercise of their power. See, we can't petition government or get the executive branch to prosecute people or go after bad actors or enforce the law because they're choosing not to do their job. So what happens then? The legislative is truly altered. Everything we put in the Constitution for the legislature to uphold is not happening. It doesn't matter if they're called courts, the legislative body or executive, if they're not doing what we say. Watch what he says next. For it is not names that constitute governments, but the use of an exercise of those powers that were intended to accompany them so that he who takes away the freedom or hinders the acting of the legislative in his due seasons in effects take, takes away the legislative and puts an end to government. Guys, when they stop doing what they're supposed to do, they're not going to tell you this. The attorneys aren't going to tell you this. When they stop, stop holding up their end of the bargain, like Wendy Rogers blocking people, Sonny Borelli won't talk, Joseph Chaplick blocking people, when they don't want to hear what you have to say, you don't have to sit there and allow them to continue. What else did they do? They changed the ways of elections. Let me let you see something. 216, thirdly, when they win by the arbitrary power of the prince, the electors or ways of election. See, Katie Hobbs changed the ways of elections because she wanted to. She's the executive branch like the prince would be. As the Secretary of State, I mean, I'm sorry. The electors or the ways of elections are altered without the consent and contrary to the common interest of the people. We didn't tell them to change the ways of elections, to go to all this mail-in stuff, to make people use Sharpies, uh, to have all the machines breaking down and using things that we didn't tell them to. Nobody told them to do that. When they go against the common interest of the people... It says, there also the legislative is altered. For if other than those whom the society hath authorized thereunto do choose, 
or in another way than what the society has prescribed, those chosen are not the legislative appointed by the people. See, this fundamental law is showing us everything that we've been complaining about, wondering about, that they've hidden or tried to call us stupid for saying. They call us stupid for saying. See, guys, when they go get an executive branch entity or independent entity, it is foreign to the people of Arizona. When they go get these entities and tell us that they're taking over our power and they their hands are tied and they're doing what they want to do and we can't stop them because they gave the power away or they're saying that some 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 little body that was created is acting out of control but what can we do? Fourthly, the the delivery also of the people into the subjection of a foreign power either by the prince or by the legislative is certainly a change of the legislative weight. So when they say that we can follow under the terms of anybody who gives them money and then they attack the people and your right to be open because somebody else told them that they have to shut down the state to get this money. They just dissolve the government. Watch this. Is certainty a change of the le legislative and so a dissolution of the government? For the end, why people entered into society being to be preserved one entire free, independent society to be governed by its own laws, this is lost whenever they are given up to the power of another. They had no right to make a law talking about they're going to allow anybody to make the terms of what the state is going to do for money. And then they lock people down over this foolishness. I'm telling you guys, this is serious business. We have the power to remove them all together at once when they do stuff like this. We tried to get them to prosecute and they didn't want to prosecute. They fail to go after bad actors who changed election law, who didn't get signature verification on ballots. Watch this, 219. There is one more way whereby such a government may be dissolved and that is when he who has the ex a supreme executive power neglects or abandons that charge so that the laws already made can no longer be put in execution. This is demonstratively to reduce all to anarchy and so effectively to dissolve the government. For laws not being made for themselves, but to be by their execution, the bonds of the society keep every part of the body politic in its due place and function. When that totally ceases, the government visibly ceases and the people become a confused multitude without order or connection. See, guys, many of you have tried to figure out what to do. You're begging people to prosecute, take action against certain actors who are just doing wrong. And they won't do it. You don't have to just sit there and take that. Look at right here. It says, where the laws cannot be executed, it is all... One, as if there were no laws and a government without law is, I suppose, a mystery in politics, inconceivable to human capacity and inconsistent with human society. Now, guys, right now, the government officials, Wendy Rogers, Sonny Borelli, the right and the left don't want to listen, don't want to do what you tell them to do. Now they're upset because you're giving them censures. They can't stop it. And you are growing fast and getting ready to take back the whole republic. They don't know what to do. And I'm sure you're wondering, how? How can we take back the republic? How can we fix this? Let me give it to you. You have a remedy right now that nobody has told you about, and this is your chance to stand as the precinct committeeman and as the people and spread this around and take back your state and remove any actors that are making your state dangerous as a whole, if you choose, and change the constitutions the constitution of the state in order to get remedy and justice and start fresh. Here's what the brilliant John Locke said in section 220. 
In these, the things we just talked about, in the like cases, when the government is dissolved, when they're not acting right, the people are at liberty. You got 100% guaranteed right to provide for themselves. Stop begging the legislature. Stop begging Wendy Rogers to talk to people. Stop begging Sonny Borelli to talk to people. Stop begging Katie Hobbs to stop with the foolishness. Stop begging these people. The people, precinct committeemen, that's you and everyday men and women, the people are at liberty to provide for themselves by erecting a new legislative differing from the other. You can get rid of Wendy Rogers and everybody else at the same time and change the Constitution and the form of government. Watch or both. Look what it says. Erecting a new legislative differing from the other. We can just say, listen, y'all don't want to provide service to us. You don't want to talk to us. You want to block us. Good. We don't want you anymore. So just leave. And we'll start over, write our own new constitution in emergency right now with the people. The, the, the PCs, the LDs are tired of their foolishness, their fakery, their inability to pass laws. They won't impeach the person who's blocking them from past laws. It is a hoax. You are wasting our money every single year. You pass bills to go against the people, and that allows the Bar Association to keep prosecuting people, taking people's stuff. They make more money, but you can't handle our affairs. It says, the people are at liberty to provide for themselves by erecting a new legislative differing from the other by the change of persons or form or both as they shall find it most for their safety and good. We get to choose. For the society can never by the fault of another lose their native and original right it has to preserve itself. Guys, we're at the point where we got to preserve ourselves. Which can only be done by a subtle legislative and a fair and an impartial execution of the laws made by it. We can't keep using the same people calling themselves America first while taking your rights and making side deals with other entities to take your life, liberty, and property. Lock you down, shut you down, destroy your businesses and all this stuff. We can't keep taking their word that they're going to fix it when they're destroying our state. But the state of mankind is not so miserable that they are not capable of using this remedy till it be too late to look for any. To tell the people that they may provide for themselves by erecting a new legislative when by oppression, artifice, their trickery, or being delivered over to a foreign power, their old one is gone, is to tell them that they may expect relief when it is too late. And the evil is past cure. This is in effect no more than to bid them first be slaves and then to take care of their liberty. And when their chains are on to tell them they may act like free men. This, if barely so, is rather mockery than relief. And men can never be secure from tyranny if there be no means to escape it till they are perfectly under it. And therefore, it is that they have not only a right to get out of it, but to prevent it. Guys, you got the right to prevent this foolishness from continuing. I have already showed you that the legislatures made statutes with their silly attorneys to take away your life, liberty, and property. And then they don't even use what they swore to give you in the state constitution in those tribunals. But the tribunals are unlawful in, first, in the first place because they're attacking your rights and property. Let me prove it to you. The government officials are trustees. They don't have a right to attack your property, guys, or tell somebody else they can. That's a conflict of interest. They swear to protect their rights and property, and then they're writing statute to tell others they can take it? Ridiculous. 221. There is, therefore, secondly, another way whereby governments are dissolved. And that is when the legislative or the prince, either of them, act contrary to their trust. When the, when the woman, Katie Hobbs, the so-called governor, or the legislature will not do what they swore to do, pass laws to protect the people's elections, not attack the people, they are going against the trust we reposed in them. Watch. For the legislature acts against the trust reposed in them when they endeavor to invade the property of the subject and to make themselves or any part of the community, any agency, any office, any entity, 
masters or arbitrary disposers over the lives, liberty, and fortunes of the people. They shut down your businesses, stop you from going to church, stop you from having the pursuit of happiness because they felt that they can give other people the power to do so as they made money in federal programs. Guys, we don't have to take this. We can stand up now and fix this. We need to assemble together and have discussions. And we don't need these political figures to be involved because we have a right to, re to move on without them for breaking the law. And PCs, you are the best for this, along with the people, because you are at a base level, grassroots level of government, and you are closer to the people than the representatives are. You have already shown that you are not happy with what they're doing wrong. And you have already stood up to make change. Well, this is your opportunity to use real remedy. It's time for us to get together and make these changes. This is your right. You don't have to watch your state fall to nothing. The government is just your servants. They don't control the people. So now it's time for us to move forward and do what the people must do to secure their body politic. Okay, guys, so you have been able to see just a bit of the different things that the government of Arizona have been doing to destroy the people's rights. And now we see more than ever that they don't want to follow the law. They don't want to follow real due process, which uses fundamental law and those things which are right that they don't talk about. They try to deceive the people. They do these show trials. They did a show trial with Liz Harris, where we can see that there was not fairness, And then Joseph Chaplick tries to tell us that it was fair. We are done with the foolishness. If you are inadequate and can't fix our state right now, you don't need to be here. And we don't have to wait on the permission of a government servant to get our body politics in order. There is enough of us to change the Constitution and remove the people and start over right now with the PCs who want to do right across the state. There are people on both sides who are sick and tired of government just running the people over. Now it's time to stand and make things right. If you wish to make things right, please give a comment here on Rumble. I will try to put up a link or make a group if you wish uh, to start pushing and getting these things done. I will reach out to Christian Lamar to start getting the PCs to write resolutions to change the Constitution and to uh, express their interest in using real remedy to fix these things so that the state doesn't fall into any more corruption. We can fix this. We don't need the help of politicians who will not hear us. It doesn't matter how much they scream that they're Republican or America first or conservative or they want to do right. It's about them taking the actions and using the powers we gave in the state constitution to fix these things and they have not. The time is ours. The time is yours. Precinct committeemen and the people. You are now activated with real knowledge. If you need the steps, reach out to Christian Lamar. I'm David Jose on Twitter at Dave Cares for You. Let's get moving, guys. Let's step up. Let's share this with everybody in Arizona and make the change. I love you guys. You are so blessed. This is a great time to fix our nation and to fix our state. I promise you, if we fix our state, the nation will follow. We will have our kids in a position where they can enjoy their life, their liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. Let's not let them down.